wanted to see me, Martha. What? Oh, yes, Julia, sit down. Um, how long have you been at Apex TV now? Let's see, I started in September last year, so about a year. And so far, you've worked with me on the food program, you've done some interviews, and you've done quite a lot of research, too. But how do you see yourself in, say, five years' time? As a reporter? A researcher? A producer? Definitely a producer. Production's what I like best. I thought so. Well, I'm pleased to tell you that from next month you're no longer a trainee but an assistant producer. And we're going to give you a permanent contract. What, really? That's wonderful. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Alan Meredith is waiting to see you. And uh, is it all right if I go now? Rebecca's very quiet this morning. She always gets nervous when she sees her family. Oh, yes, she's going to her sister's graduation. Anyway, come and meet Alan Meredith. He's from Australia. He's visiting us for a couple of days. Um, I'd like you to look after him. Show him around, introduce him to people. You know the sort of thing. <laughs> What do you do at Kangaroo TV, Alan? I'm the marketing manager. And what are you doing in the UK? We buy a lot of British programmes and we sell some to the UK too, so I'm visiting the TV stations that we deal with. Oh. Gary, can I introduce you to Alan Meredith from Australia? Yeah. Alan, this is... You don't need to introduce this man. It's Gary Fenton, the newsreader. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. <laughs> You're very well known down under. We broadcast your News from the UK programme every week. It's one of our most popular shows. Really? Well, I'm just going to record something for that now. Would you like to come and watch? But we're on our way to see Frederick. I saw him leaving about half an hour ago. He's having lunch with the Prime Minister. Hmm. Uh, OK with you then, Julia? Yes, it's fine. Oh, by the way, Gary, I've got some good news. I've been... Sorry, Julia. Duty calls. <laughs> What a day. Do you know we've done a report on traffic congestion every year for the last four years? And then we were sitting in a traffic jam for two hours. Oh, I've been in this job too long. But you used to enjoy it. Hello, lads. Hi, Simon. Simon. Everything all right? Yeah. Great. Excellent. Wouldn't mind his job. What, foreign reporter? Travelling to different places all the time. That would be great. Hi. Hi, Julia. You on your own? No, I'm looking after this guy from Australia. He's just making a phone call. I've got some news. Well, let me get you a drink first. White wine. We had some trouble yesterday with Jason and Kylie. When I got home, they were playing football in the garden and they kicked the ball through the neighbour's window. Oh, dear. But that wasn't all. Our neighbours had just sat down for dinner and the ball landed right in the middle of the table. There was food and glass everywhere. There you go. Now, what's this news? Sorry about that. Alan, let me introduce you to Tim Barnes. Tim's one of our reporters. And Sean Casey. Sean's a cameraman. Oh, excuse me. Hello, Tim Barnes. When? Can't peek cover it. We've just finished for the day. OK. There's been an accident at the airport. Alan, would you like to come along with us? Julia? Sorry, I keep doing this. That's OK. You can tell me more about Australia on the way. Bye. Might see you later. I'm writing my Christmas list. In September? I haven't even started to think about buying Christmas presents yet. There's nothing wrong with being organised. No, no, nothing at all. Anyway, I've got some news. Don't put that there. 
I'm sorry, Julia. I've just had a bad day. What's wrong? My parents. It's always the same. Cindy's the first person in the family to get an MBA degree. Isn't she doing well? And then it always turns to, are you still working at that TV station, Rebecca? Why don't you look for something better? That's not fair. You're very good at your job. <sighs> I know. And I like the people. Anyway, what's your news? Oh, nothing important. Would you like a cup of tea or something? Do you want to hear my news? I've been promoted to assistant producer. And I've got a permanent contract. That's wonderful, Julia. Well done. This is Gary Fenton with the One O'Clock News. Severe weather has brought problems to many parts of Britain. Heavy rain has caused floods in the south. In the north, strong winds have damaged buildings and brought down electricity cables. Many people in Scotland will be without electricity for several days. The storms will slowly move northwards during the day, but it will stay very cold for the time of year. I can't believe this weather. It's supposed to be summer. Sean got soaked this morning. A lorry drove through a huge puddle and sprayed water all over him. Poor Sean. Has he dried out yet? I hope so. We're leaving to do another report in a few minutes. Well, in two days' time, I'll be on a warm, sunny beach and it'll be all barbies and surfboards. But it's winter in Australia now, isn't it? Well, it's nearly spring, but the weather's pretty good there all year round, actually. Sounds great. Oh, I like all the different kinds of weather that we have here. It's nice in autumn when the trees change colour and in winter when it's cold and frosty. Anyway, I'd better go and call you a taxi. I'll give Alan a lift. You're going to the station, aren't you? It's on my way. Thanks. I'll just go and get my bags from Rebecca's office. Thanks for everything. Have a good trip, Alan. And send us some of that Australian sunshine. You're quite interested in Australia, aren't you, Tim? Yes. Well, Kangaroo TV is expanding, and we're going to need some new blood, particularly people with the kind of experience you've got. Sounds interesting. Well, if you are interested, one of our directors, Isabel Mendoza, is going to be at the Intertel conference in Amsterdam next month. Perhaps you could arrange to meet her there. Thanks, I might do that. But remember, Julia likes the British climate. <laughs> Bye. Have a good trip. Bye. I think it's a good idea, don't you? Huh? Gary, shall we do something to celebrate Julia's promotion? Sure. What about arranging a surprise dinner for her on Friday? Why Friday? She's working late, so it will give us time to get things ready. You aren't doing anything, are you? Hmm? OK, so who's going to do what? I'll cook my duck à l'orange. You can't do that in a microwave, can you? Uh, people travel miles for my duck. I'll do the vegetables and a dessert. And I'll get some champagne. Yes, Tim. I'd like to go to the Intertel conference next month. It's in Amsterdam. Ah, yes. Frederick's going to be one of the speakers there. But I thought you didn't like conferences. You've always refused to go in the past. Well, yes, but I thought it might be a good idea to, you know, keep up with what's going on in the business. OK, but you'll need to put in a formal request for funding. Right.
Could you get the information on the Intertel conference in Amsterdam, please, Rebecca? I'd like to know who's going to be there. Gary, can you take your shoes off if you're going to stand on the sofa? Someone get me that drawing, then. What? Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh. Ah! It's all right, Gary's found it. Hello? Thanks, Ted. She's just left work, so she should be here in about 20 minutes. Julia Drake, isn't it? Yes. Hello, I'm Zoe Pierce. We're going to be working together soon, I gather. Oh, you're going to be the director of that new series on the paranormal, aren't you? That's right. Look, are you doing anything at the moment? No, I'm just on my way home. Would you like to go for a drink? Or how about having a bite to eat somewhere? That would be great. It'll save cooking. Good. I always like to get to know the people I'm going to work with. I left work nearly two hours ago. I hope nothing's happened to her. My duck will be ruined if we don't eat it soon. I'm starving. She must have gone somewhere after work. That was a very nice meal. Yeah, I like this place. I came here with Tim once. So, you're looking forward to your new job? Yeah, it's going to be great. Well, here's to you, Julia. Congratulations. Thanks. Can I check in here for Amsterdam? Yes, sir. Can I set your ticket and passport, please? Thank you. Did you pack the bag yourself? Yes, I did. And does the bag contain any electrical items? No, it doesn't. And has the bag been left unattended at any time? No. Would you prefer a window or an aisle seat, Mr Barnes? Window, please. Okay, here's your boarding pass. You're in seat 15A. Boarding is at 11.15 at gate 27. Have a nice flight. Thank you. Hi, Simon. Are you going to the Intertel conference too? <laughs> no, no. I'm off to Rome. I'm covering the elections there. It's lovely in Italy at this time of year. See you. Bye. Okay, 20 seconds, everyone. Gary! What? Oh, sorry, it's my new mobile phone. The latest model, you know. Put it away. Five, four, three, two, one. Cue music. <clears throat> It's six o'clock. This is Gary Fenton with the early evening news. The police are warning the public to be on the lookout for a dangerous criminal. He is one of three people who robbed a branch of the Southern Alliance Bank this morning. The thieves made off with over two million pounds. However, their car was spotted by the police. They were chased for over two miles before the car was hit by a lorry and overturned. The lorry driver was not hurt in the accident. A man and a woman in the car were arrested and taken to hospital, but a second man escaped. He is described as in his 30s, tall and with fair hair. He was probably injured in the crash. 
The police say that if he is seen, he must not be approached. He is dangerous and could be armed. Hurry up, Julia. Gary will be here soon. And don't forget to close your window. You know what happened last time? Well, I didn't know it was going to rain. When does Tim get back from his conference? On Friday. Okay, see you later. Julia? Gary's car's been stolen. What? His car's been nicked. We'll have to try and get a taxi from the end of the street. Okay. Coming. No. No. No! Right, bye. That was the police. Any news about your car? No. It's probably been used as a getaway car at this very moment. And look what happened to the car in that robbery yesterday. Has that guy been caught yet? It's a bit scary thinking that there's a criminal out there somewhere. There's a criminal out there in my car, too. People like that should be locked up for life. Relax, Gary. It'll be found sooner or later. Relax? You wouldn't say that if it was your car. Why don't you come round to our place after work for a meal? It'll take your mind off things. Thanks. But if I get my hands on the people who've taken my car, I'll... Nobody messes with Gary Fenton and gets away with it. I'll get this. No, it's OK. No, no. I insist. Could I have a receipt, please? Thank you. Hello, Gary. There's someone inside the flat. What? Did you close your window? I told you you shouldn't leave it open. My car's been found and it hasn't been damaged. Shh. What's that? Could you go in and find out? Me? Uh, we ought to phone the police. Go on, Gary. No way! OK, then, this is my fault. I'll do it. Give me the keys. I wouldn't do that if I were you. It could be the man the police are looking for. Gary. All right. Nobody messes with Gary Fenton and gets away with it. Our hero. <laughs> Doing a lot of training lately. Yes, I thought I'd enter the London Marathon. Wow. Do you know where the pen for phone messages is? 
I've been using it to do the crossword. Sorry. I know it shouldn't be moved from the phone. Leave those. I'll see to them in a minute. And I haven't finished with those yet. It's Sunday morning, Rebecca. Relax. OK. I'm going to have a shower. How are you? Not too bad, I suppose. Jason and Kylie. What have they been doing now? They've been talking on one of those telephone chat lines. You know, where you can talk to people from all over the country. We got the phone bill yesterday. I don't know what we're going to do with those kids. You could try strangling them. Rebecca, your sister phoned just now. She'd like you to call her back. Cindy? She never phones me at work. I wonder what she wants. Could you let me have a report sometime on the Amsterdam conference, Tim? And I'd particularly like to know whether you made any useful contacts there. Sure, no problem. I'd like to know what you were up to as well. I'm sure you would, Julia. <laughs> It's very strange. I've been living in that flat for four years and she's only ever visited me once before. Do you know what she wants? No. Why do people have to be so mysterious? I don't know why they can't just say what's on their mind. Don't you agree, Tim? Uh, yes. Yes, definitely. Tidying this flat for the last two hours, and it was tidy when you started, and that's the fourth time you've straightened that pen. What is it with you and your family? Why does everything have to be so perfect? Ever since I can remember, Cindy's always been better at everything. She got better grades at school. She went to university. I went to the local technical college. She's got a high-powered job in the city. I'm just a, a secretary. A personal assistant. But I don't see what that's got to do with being tidy. I've got to show that I'm better at something. If I can't be as successful as her, I can be neater or more organised or fitter. Is that why you want to do the London Marathon? <coughs> Just relax. Tim and I are going out, so I'll be out of your way soon. Julia, I don't know how to say this, but there's something I need to tell you. I suppose you're wondering why I wanted to go to that conference. Well... Hey, you'll never believe this, Julia, but I'm thinking of going to work in Australia. Julia, my love. Julia, I don't know whether you'll like this, but... Of course she won't like it, you nerd. It's no good. I'll wait till I hear whether I've definitely got the job. Rebecca, is Cindy still here? No, she's gone. You all right? Only you haven't cleared the table. I've had such a strange evening. What happened? You know, Cindy's always been a high-powered businesswoman with a flash car and loads of money and now this MBA as well. Yeah. Well, she's met this guy called Jimmy. Actually, they've been going out for about two years. She hasn't told Mum and Dad because they wouldn't approve. How romantic. And now she's given up her job. What? Yes. 
It seems she's been living a lie all her life. She's done all the things she's done just to please Mum and Dad. Wow. But you haven't heard the best bit. She envies me because I've always done what I wanted. And now she's decided to do what she wants to do too. Going to Africa? Yes. She and Jimmy are going to teach in a school for blind children. Well, she won't make any money doing that. That's the whole point, Gary. So you've been competing with each other all your lives for no reason? Yes. But we couldn't tell each other how we really felt. You were right the other day, Julia. We should all be more honest with each other. I've given that up. I never really enjoyed it. No London Marathon, then? No. I thought I'd just read the paper and maybe do the crossword. Could you pass me that pen? Thanks. Marry me. I can't. I'm editing the news. Tim? Tim? Good morning, Miss Drake. This is your wake up call. It's five o'clock. Thank you. The Amsterdam report. Thank you. How was Isabel? Sorry? Stop playing games, Tim. I've been in this business far too long for that. Isabel Mendoza and I go way back. She's on the board of directors of Kangaroo TV, and she was at the Amsterdam conference. <sighs> OK. I got a letter from Kangaroo TV a couple of days ago offering me a job. Telling Julia isn't going to be easy. Well, delaying it won't make it any easier. I know. I've decided to tell her as soon as I see her. But she's been away for the past few days. Oh, yes. She's doing this series with Zoe Pierce about ghosts and UFOs and things, isn't she? Yes. But she's coming back tonight. Going off to work in Australia is a big step, Tim. So think about it carefully, for your sake and Julia's. It happened about five years ago. One night, while driving to the hospital, I was doing night duty at the time, I heard a voice saying, turn the car around, go back, turn the car around. I remember thinking there was somebody else in the car with me, but there wasn't. Then, suddenly, in my mind, I saw my house burning and there were people screaming. It was very frightening. So I quickly turned around and headed back home. When I pulled up outside the house, everything looked all right. Then I noticed a light flickering in the front room. And as I walked up the path, I could see that there was smoke coming out of the window. I rushed in, woke up my wife and children and got them outside. A few minutes later, the whole house was on fire. And cut. Thank you, Dr. Ackroyd. That was great. OK. Thank you. Right, that just about wraps it up for this week. We can pack up now and head off. Thanks, Ian. Thanks. It's a weird story, yes. wasn't it? It's very strange. Although, I don't believe in premonitions. No, nor do I. 
Julia, will you marry me? I can't. I'm editing the news. Do you still want me to drop you off at home? No, you needn't bother. We finished a lot earlier than I expected. I'll call in at the office. There are a few things I want to sort out for next week's shoot. You're really enjoying your new job, aren't you? I love it. Oh, I've left my mobile upstairs. Just a minute. Hi, Sean Ted. Can you hold the lift? Thank you. Tim, what's this I hear about you going to Australia? How did you know about that? Gary told me. Gary? Oh, no. That means everyone in the whole place will know by now. It's a good job Julia isn't there today. She is. She came in while you were getting your mobile. What? everywhere. You know, don't you? Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to say anything until it was definite. So what are you going to do? I'm going to tell them that I can only take the job if my wife agrees. Your wife? Yes. Julia, will you marry me? What? Tim asked me to marry him. Congratulations. When's the big day? You didn't say yes then? No, I didn't. I told him not to be silly, but he said he was serious. What did you say? I said that I would have to think about it. And have you? Thought about it, that is. I've thought about nothing else since. I would like to marry Tim, and I wouldn't mind living in Australia, but, well, I'm really enjoying my new job, and it's sort of like Tim wants to go to Australia, so my job isn't important. I just have to give it up to let him do what he wants to do. You'll have to decide what you're going to do soon, though, won't you? Well, luckily I'm going away tomorrow night. I won't be back for the next few days, so I've got a bit of time to think about it. In the 1960s, experts predicted that by the beginning of the 21st century, work would be a thing of the past. They said that almost every job would be done by robots, and people would spend all their time on leisure activities. In fact, it seems the opposite has happened. According to a recent report, we now work longer than ever before. And more and more people have to work on social hours, working at night or at weekends. Of course, there are benefits. We all earn more. We now have 24-hour telephone banking. Most shops are open seven days a week, and some, like this supermarket, are open round the clock. But what effect is this having on our health? And, with parents spending more time at work, what is it doing to family life? It's nearly midnight, and I'm going to ask some of the customers and workers here what they think. And cut. I don't know about other people working long hours. I've hardly been home in the past week. You've got tomorrow off. Yeah, but I'm not looking forward to it. We're going to see a child psychologist about Jason and Kylie. It's because of the incident with the digger. Oh, yes. You said that they'd backed it into the newsagent's window. 
That was after they'd driven it through someone's garden. Why on earth the workman left the keys in it, I'll never know. So where does the child psychologist come into this? Well, the police said that Jason and Kylie would be in serious trouble if we didn't do something about them. Hello, Tim Barnes. Hi, Tim, it's me. Hi. Are you all right? It's two o'clock in the morning. I couldn't sleep. I didn't wake you up, did I? No. We've been working late. I was going to wait till I got back, but, well... I've thought about, you know... Getting married? Yes. And? Hi, Tim. Have you spoken to Julia lately? Her mobile doesn't seem to be working. She phoned me from her hotel the other night. She told me that she wanted to marry me, but she wasn't going to. She said that I'd only asked her to marry me, to get myself out of a difficult situation. She's very upset about it all, you know. Well, she told me that I was going to have to choose. Australia or her. Oh, hi, Sean. Didn't it go very well with the psychologist? He told me that Kylie and Jason weren't the problem. I was. He said I didn't spend enough time with them. But I said it was difficult with my job. You do work pretty unsocial hours. He asked me what I did, so I told him. Did you tell him that you enjoyed your job too? Yeah. But he asked me which was more important, my family or my job. He said I had to decide what my priorities were. Can I speak to Julia Drake, please? Checked out? OK, thank you. Hello, Tim. Simon. I thought you were in Rome. I was, but I had to come back early. Martha wants to talk to me in person. And apparently Frederick's going to be there too. Our managing director's actually here. Must be something important. Are you coming to the pub for lunch? Um, I'll see you there. I just want to send this email. Australia, eh? Mind your own business. Yeah. Martha free yet? No, she's still with Simon and Frederick. They've been in there all afternoon. Martha's free first thing tomorrow morning. It's OK. I'll wait. Sean was here earlier. He told me he'd decided to ask for a transfer to studio work. What? He hates working indoors. He said it was because the hours were more regular and if you were going to Australia... It was an appropriate time for a change. He's here now, actually. OK. Martha's just asked me to find you. She wants you to go in and join them. Really? Is this because of Sean's family? Yes. He said he'd realised that the people he loved were more important than his job. He said it was all a question of priorities.
bit of a marathon. I didn't see the ghost. I would have run a mile if it had appeared. Oh, exhausted. Perhaps you shouldn't have tried to do it all in one day. Maybe. Anyway, I don't fancy driving back tonight. Why don't we stay somewhere near here and then we can go straight into work tomorrow? OK. I'll ring round some of the local hotels. Can I borrow your mobile? Mine's not working. Yes, of course. Here you are. Hi, Rebecca. Is Julia back yet? And she hasn't called? Well, when you speak to her, could you get her to call me? I don't mind how late. I'm going to be working till at least half past three in the morning. Cheers. Here's your coffee. I suppose this will be our last job together. Yes. I hope the studio work goes well for you. So do I. And good luck with your new job, too. Thanks. It'll be good to see some new places. To the future. Cheers. Good morning, Zoe. Julia? Morning, Ted. Morning. Oh, Zoe, I've got a package for you here, and you need to sign for it. Well, I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't heard it from Martha. See you later, Zoe. OK. So he's definitely going to Australia? Yes, to Kangaroo TV. Julia? Hello, Tim Barnes. What? Is she all right? The general. Yeah, I'm on my way. Julia, are you all right? What happened? You may well ask, Tim Barnes. This is all your fault. If you hadn't decided to go off to Australia, this wouldn't have happened. But you should have told me, Tim. Could somebody please tell me what's going on? I was in reception and I heard Abigail saying that you were definitely going to Australia. She said that I was going to Australia. Well, she didn't actually mention your name, but... Well, I don't think it's very funny. If that driver hadn't stopped so quickly, Julia would have been killed. She wasn't talking about me. She was talking about Frederick. I'm not going to Australia. Straight. Frederick's going to be managing director of Kangaroo TV, and Martha's taking over. Then Simon Fletcher's taking Martha's place, and they've offered me Simon's old job as foreign reporter. So as soon as you're well again, we can get married. But nothing's really changed, has it, Tim? What do you mean? You wouldn't have asked me to marry you if you hadn't been offered the job in Australia. And you would have gone if Simon's job hadn't come up. No, I'd already turned the Australian job down. I don't believe you. How's the patient? Look, I I'll show you. Oh, no, I put it under your door. Is this what you want? Thank you. You really turned it down? 
I emailed that yesterday before I knew anything about the job at Apex. It's true, Julia. I saw him typing it. Must be nice being a foreign reporter going to all those different places. It is. I'm off to Barbados today. Oh, really? So am I. I'm staying at the Honeymoon Hotel. Perhaps I'll see you there, Mr. Barnes. Perhaps you will, Mrs. Barnes. <laughs>